Hello and welcome to the weekly wrap-up video for our podcast for Friday, March 8th, 2024. Had a very busy frenetic week this week with uh, interviews. As you know, we interviewed with Derek Johnson. That was a great show and he offered a lot of sage advice and uh, intel about what's going on from a geopolitical and somewhat of a financial perspective. Uh, of course, the legendary Bill Holter, who weighed in on a number of things, including the true nation's debt and what that means for the banking financial system, which we'll touch on on our, our rapid updates. Uh, the venerable David Mahoney, his trip to Vietnam and what he discovered over there about the value of the Vietnamese dong and the culture there, respectively. And today we have a good friend that I was on his show years ago and I've asked him to come on. He's been graciously accepted our invitation, Dr. Scott Young all things Nessera, where we are with the patents for that and where we're seeing uh, Nessera activities to present day. Next week, we've got uh, Eli Weber talking more about Nessera and some of the patents and what he sees with respect to his community in New York as it relates to the societal uh, waking up of things as well as uh, QFS updates. Scott Thomas, <clears throat> who we've had on before, Christian Financial Advisor, he's gonna be touching on how he recommends foreign currency uh, precious metals and certain cryptos to certain members of his clientele as a uh, per need and per discernmental basis. And also he has found a way uh, to grow your own food uh, and get the right, correct seeds. And he's uh, vying to be one of our uh, adjunct professors on financial planning and uh, natural food therapies and food growth and canning uh, for the real world channel. And then, of course, good friend Joe Williams will be making a return appearance where he's going to be putting together some geopolitical decodes that he's come up with in regards to the election and the distate of the union that, that some saw last night. I didn't watch. Mm -hmm. I, I knew it was the whole script. I'm sure most of you did as well. But for those who did watch, <clears throat> he's got a nice breakdown of that. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, let's get into the headlines. So here's the top headlines that I've picked for the week. U.S. Bank. Caught this on Santa Surfing last night, loses over 44% of their overall value of their stock for the fourth quarter of 2023. What does that mean? Well, it's significant. We obviously, it means banks are dying and hemorrhaging, but it proves that Basel III is working because it's forcing transparency of showing gold and silver on their balance sheets. And those unable to do so will be going bye bye. Uh, it also points to the commercial real estate industry, which is largely dead, and how that translates into the residential real estate market, which is going to see, we believe, a major correction uh, as the year goes along. Uh, dovetailing that, we talked about this before, community, uh, New York Community Bank loses over 40% of their stock shares, which accounts for over $3 billion in annualized losses. It's a significant hit, especially for a community bank. We discussed this on Bill Holter yesterday, for those of you who watched that show, and we both have determined that the true debt of the US economy is somewhere closer to 250 and 300 trillion. That means that the fake news and the banks are obviously lying and underreporting the real losses at at least a 70% clip. Jerome Powell finally is forced to admit that major bank failures are happening, surprise, surprise, and blaming commercial real estate. Sure. Uh, Nigeria is getting ready to join BRICS. What's Nigeria close to in geographical terms? Zimbabwe. You can start to see the connections of South Africa rebuilding their wealth against the subjugation of the deep state and the Rothschild banks. Erdogan is some great news here as far as Iraq. Erdogan has reported as of today that uh, he is set to go out March 31st to Iraq in order to sign all the important laws, the reforms, taxes and tariffs, and the ever vaunted hydrocarbon gas law for the oil credits. And they, uh, Iraq is moving to a digital asset backed system like all the currencies and all the nations will do. Uh, per Basel III and BRICS. And uh, you have to understand that they have a robust set of resources we've discussed beyond oil. They also have gold, oil, diamonds, and phosphorus, just to name a few. So they're being pushed out of just, you know, singularly living off the oil reserves and into their assets that they've been hiding all this time. Uh, Janine Planchette, the head of UN, UN Foreign Relations to Iraq, has agreed to, I believe, go to the meeting when, when Sudani goes to DC, we're told sometime the first week of, of April in the new fiscal year, she has already agreed to turn on the switch and restore their purchasing power, again, on a digital asset-backed platform. So this is pretty significant, uh, what's going on. These are all the things that need to happen. I know there's been reports out there, folks, from certain people who mean well, 
saying that it's on the Forex. It's not on the Forex yet. It's not on the CBI. That will be a global announcement. And it, it is preceded by Sudani announcing to the UN that they are returning to the national stage. They have to get rid of the US deep state hold and they still have to get rid of the Iranian proxy control within Iraq, both of which have not yet happened. They will, but we're not there yet. And by the way, we posted um, on Telegram, it's not to get clicks, but for those of you who watch, we put up a lot of articles of really detailed information so that you will know this, so that you're ahead of the curve as well. Uh, we po po posted an article, excuse me, about, I wanna say three weeks to a month ago, that uh, clearly showed that they were, Iraq was intending to go back to 1940s pricing when they established their new rate, which is higher than what the rate was. It, we don't do dates and rates here, but I'm just talking about in terms of factual historical events, they're giving the true accurate rate brought up with the rate of inflation. We haven't even seen the hyperinflation yet, so you can do the math on that. Point being is when it comes out, I think many of you are gonna be pleasantly surprised. And as it free floats and the market dictates its value by demand, which is a lot of countries obviously wanting it. If you just continue to trust the Lord, I think you're gonna be quite pleased with the results as we've discussed before. Anyway, moving forward, gold hit an all time plateau this week at 2174. And watch silver, talking to Bill Holter, go up between $25 and $30. When it hits that threshold, it's going to really move and not be suppressed anymore. The banks are not able to control and suppress it with paper anymore. And here's a big reason why. On March 11th, the Fed stopped giving liquidity banks as part of their lending program. Why? Because they're broke. We've just talked about New York Community Bank and about, um, let's see, U.S. Bank. I had to go back to my notes. Uh, having massive losses, right? Which is part of the many reasons they're closing up a lot of their retail branches. Try to save face for the shareholders, but they're broke. So they can no longer lend to banks like uh, uh, JP Morgan, uh, HSBC, Bank of America, uh, US Bank and the like, because they're out of liquidity. What a coincidence that uh, there's also talk of a government shutdown, which they will try to print, print, print their way out of, but that's just, facilitating the inevitability of the collapse of the old cabal system. And, and last but not least, but this is an important uh, subject to denote, the cryptos are starting to really skyrocket because money is moving out of the stock market into cryptos. So again, not financial advisor, not telling you what to do, just telling you what I'm doing and giving you the cogent information. We would be watching things like Shiba Inu, which we've discussed before, that's coming out of the ashes. Uh, Luna Classic and many other meme coins are going to start to skyrocket. As I'm looking at my portfolio, it's moved up significantly. We haven't even hit the, the, the climax moment yet. So just from me to you, be watching for the end of this month for those coins and other ones. And then October in the next year is going to be the major Super Bull run cycle. After the crash and the corrections happen, they're really going to be allowed to plateau because again, we're watching for XRP's case to end in April. And when that gets let go, it's really going to start to move, which I'm sure many of you already know and are, are well anticipating like myself. Well, that's it for now. That's all the updates we have. Uh, have a great weekend, and we look forward to seeing you on the show today and next week. Take care and God bless.